We have Zeros by Declan McKenna, 10 songs long, 40 minutes long. Declan McKenna, British pop alternative. Indie. Indie kind of person. Uh, yeah, I'll give him, def he's definitely within the indie category. Yes, uh, you've heard of him. I've, I've listened to him a, a bit because it's in that genre of a lot of artists I like. Um, you know, you got your di you got your dives, your beach houses, beach fossils, all of those peoples. Uh, he had his pretty hit album, uh, What Do You Think About the Car, which had um, a couple good songs like Brazil, Make Me Your Queen, songs like that that kind of like got him up and up into it. Um, I think this is this his first big album, his first full album since that. Yeah, yeah. So um, this album I read, he went to Nashville. To create this album, which I think is an interesting choice for like a Brit, a Brit alternative indie, indie artist yeah, to go to. But he described it as saying, like, you know, Nashville is full of a lot of people who are really creative and love caring about music and really want to jump into music. It's kind of like what people used to describe LA as, mm -hmm. but like minus the insanity and crazy of LA. So yeah, a lot you of know, this Nashville is straight for music. Like that's pretty much the entire city. Yeah. yeah. And this album, like it, I think a lot of the vibe was like <laughs> Nashville hockey, that was a choice in HL. Okay, so um, right. the <laughs> the Utah Jazz. Okay, um, <laughs> we, the, the thing with Declan McKenna is that he chose to do an album that was, yeah, Nashville-based to get the idea of all the fun and creativity and kind of excitement of doing, like, a British record in L.A. without the drab of London, without the Silicon Valley dystopia nature of being in California, but just being able to, like, really hone just in on Just an actual career. And... Uh, did we say how long? It's 10 songs, 40 minutes long. Um, yes. I think this is definitely more complete of a work than his first album, for sure. Um, a little bit more of a rock sound throughout the album, which I actually enjoy. I like this sound a lot more than his previous stuff. Um, because some of his other songs could get a little bit... Like his early work could get a little bit whiny, kind of into that fuckboy indie vibe a little bit. But is a little niche thing that people do enjoy. I, Brazil is a really good song. It's actually about the corruption of FIFA, so that one, that one goes hard. Um, but some of his other work and stuff, it's like Make Me Your Queen, I don't really like per se. Um, but Zeros, I think, is a, actually a very good album. Um, so I thought better you, uh, be, you bleh, Jesus, you better believe. Um, and it just starts off with these rocking drums getting up, and it's like high pace, up tempo, and it's like this what, uh, what a lot of indie artists want to make rock sound like. That makes yeah. sense because a lot of we've heard it throughout indie a lot. A lot of them are like throwing back to the grunge era of the '90s, but they just do a straight throwback of like maybe listen to way too much Kurt Cobain and they like try to play left-handed, but they're not left-handed, so they go back to being right-handed and they make shitty music because of that. This is actual a way of pushing rock a little bit further, that indie genre a little bit further. Yeah, into it. I found myself comparing a lot of this to um, Niall Horan's most recent album. Um, it's like, again, like, sort of poppy inspired. I keep wanting to call it Nice to Meet You, but I think that was just the name of a song on it. I think it was Heartbreak Weather. Heart, it's Heartbreak Weather. Nice to Meet You is, like, the lead, like yeah. one of the most popular songs. And I think it's actually a decent song. Because I hear it and, like, because apparently Target has fucking music now, which is still the weirdest thing. Yeah, I heard Caribou and Target. Dude, yeah, I heard Caribou and Target. And that was the weird. I, I straight up heard Caribou. I looked at my woman and I'm like, wait, they're playing Caribou. Like, this is not happening. Vanessa, why is they playing Caribou? Like, super this is weird. super random as shit. But, like, the, Anyways. I, I, I had a... It, it felt that sort of, like, rocky... Almost, like... There's aspects of a lot of male British musicians, right, especially right now, that well, are calling back to Britpop. I was about to way. say. I was about to say. It calls back to Sex Pistols to Blur, but still pushing it a little bit forward. Not doing the full emo indie kid in America where they're just basically making grunge again. And everybody, and the whole indie scene loves it, but we're always like, mm, we gotta do a little bit better than that. Um... This is still doing a little bit more. It's it is a little bit poppier than his previous album, but in a good way. Yeah, because you can make poppy a pop sound that's very generic. His stuff is all like with the generic theme, like the generic production in a way, but it's pushing it forward with the lyricism, with the themes of it. It's a little bit more deep and personal within it too. Yeah, which I mean. Some pop music now is starting to do a lot more. I will give it that, but I like it. Beautiful Faces, a couple songs down, yep. reminded me of um, almost like a, the horrors kind of sound. Like I guess the from guitars. the horrors five that we had. Yeah, yeah that really punchy guitar. Um, and getting back to that point where you were saying about his lyricism it's in fantastic. Beautiful Faces, there are a lot of interesting like changes of pattern and changes of verse. That I think are fun in that song that makes it like. 
okay, this is the lead single sounding like happy peppy pop song. It's like made um, for my consumption in the sense that I like the happy peppy pop songs. They're like they sound, at least at first glance. Um, but it has enough hidden in the underneath of it to help it stand up. Yeah. I think the first half of the album is pretty solid. I think by or around like um, twice your size and rap Rapture is kind of like your standard pop indie song where it's like it's good, it's decent, but it's nothing that will carry its own weight around the other stuff. Because I think the first couple, like the first three tracks, I think are fantastic. And then by the end, it starts to like slow down a little too or like get a little too generic. And then the last two songs, I think are pretty solid. It's like a Taurus, a asterisk. And eventually, darling. I yes. think eventually, darling is a very good ending track for it because it's it slows it down like at the intro of the song, and then brings it back up, but it never like goes too fast for ending track or never too slow for an ending. Just like that perfect medium to wrap up an album with. Yeah, I like the little weird voices at the end of it. Um, uh, he does it a lot in the album too. I yeah, think. I think it's it's in little places here and there the album, but like having it in the end is like a nice sort of like wrapping up, like hmm. rounding up point. I think this is like a concept album that needs a little more meat around its concept because a lot of it's like outer space. Here's my other world where I have like other rules of how these social things work, and I'm mm -hmm. analyzing personas and people through that other world. Right? Um, he played a little too much No Man's Sky. <laughs> uh, not a bad way to live your life, but yeah. it is. It, I feel like in order to have that concept play out a little bit more, like. Uh, very similarly to this, like, I'm in space in another world thing is Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. Ar arguably, you went, like, full gas on going into the concept album, and in leaning into it, they did it really well. But I think with Declan McKenna, there needs to be a little more in the production, maybe to get me to think that this is, like, a shimmering sort of new age sort of spacey thing to fit with the rest, and not just, like, some really chill alternative songs with a bit of Nashville rock flair but also a little bit of, yeah, like you said, Sex Pistols inspiration. And it's, it's fine as that, but if we're talking about where we could push the album to go a little bit further and to make it past that barrier of being sort of, mm -hmm. you know, fine, decent, but relatively it's forgettable. Aging, aging and stuff too, it's maturity and then crafting your own tone. It's a very good step in the right direction though. Because um, with Declan McKenna, I'm like, okay, this could go one of two ways. It's either going to be pushing it forward or it's going to be a step backwards. And it's definitely pushing it forward more, yes. which is really good to hear. And the indie genre in general this year, I like a lot of our favorite artists are pushing forward. You have Phoebe Bridgers, you have um, Japanese House, a couple others who are like really pushing their own craft further now, and it's it's awesome to see. Absolutely love to see it. Um, arbitrary scale this week is the uh, amount of CDs you would be giving out um, to let people listen as like mixtapes because you're just starting out your career. Th this is your this, this is this is two signed boxes. So like every CD you sign for it and give out. So with like, more value. With, more exactly. Value. So it's a little bit more value, but you're still bitching out and having to do like 200 CDs. Yeah, like you are at Fingerprints and you're an up and coming <laughs> artist. And that's rough. You have, Oof, it's you really have rough. a table of signed CDs, but a box of unsigned CDs. And you got to make mm. it through the rest of that box. And so yeah, you're meeting your and greeting, but you're also doing your little like carpal tunnel. You're also doing your like carpal tunnel with your right hand kind of signature deal. Um, it's a little, it's, it's rough in the streets there, but oh, good album.